find truth and nobody will stand up and, and speak that truth. Here you got a guy that not only is speaking it, he's moving people powerfully. I, I think, John, God has just poured his spirit out on you. And when I watch you speak and I watch these videos, it's what we need in the country. And by the way, the videos are on the website as well. You can see some of these uh, most recent ones where he's spoken at these groups. But I, I mean, I say this all the time. It takes fuel in the tank. And we conservatives, we, you know, Bible minded folks, we don't do what the left does. They put their money where their values are and we don't do it enough. Lives fortunes and sacred honor folks erasedbook.com is a great place for you to invest just a little bit just a little bit of your fortune just go give make a donation that's just a small percentage of what you brought in this month and help john get out there you may not have the voice or the platform or whatever to go do that yourself you can get behind john and help him do this i'm excited about how god, god's blessing you in this john I, I think i think your platform is just going to explode well it already is i think it's just going to go even way beyond what's happening to you in the last few months and we want to come alongside you and, and support you in that way with the books with getting you out there to speak more giving you the ability to 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 make that you know to to, to, to do that kind of a of a schedule it gets difficult so god bless you man how can we how can we pray for you as well? Um, you're in a you're in a place right now where you've got more to do than more than you can say grace over and more requests and all that than than you can possibly handle. How can we pray for you to manage that well? What are your needs right now in terms of family and time and all that that we can specifically go to the throne of grace for? Yeah, pray that I remain humble. You know, many people start off with the right message. Yeah. But oftentimes they drift because of prestige, fame, money. All of these things. So just pray that I remain faithful to my original message, but also pray for my family. You know, I have a beautiful wife who's very supportive, and 50 percent of the time she's able able to travel with me. And I have three wonderful children that God has blessed us with. Just pray for them and pray for my wife, and um, we will definitely continue to do the work that God has called us to, to do. Amen. Amen. So good. So good. Erasedbook.com. E R A C E D. B O O K dot com. We'll have a link today at Wobblers. Uh, make it easy for you to get there. Link at uh, American Family Radio. Uh, make it easy for you to get there. Um, just a fantastic ministry to support. John, can't wait to see you in August at the Texas Capitol at Patriot Academy and out there on the road all over the country and uh, just praying for God to continue to bless you. We need you so much right now. Your voice is, is uh, just exactly what's needed in this country to bring us together because you nailed it, man. The cultural Marxists, they love this division any way they can get it so you put your finger on exactly where the uh where the real problem is god bless you man thanks for coming on and spending some time with us today thank you so much rick man what a treat i, I cannot wait to have him speaking to the patriot academy students at the texas capitol this summer going to be coming in and doing the charge we do a uh, uh you know message from a pastor at on the house floor this is the tradition that the founding fathers put in place you know for the first 150 years they do this they bring the house the senate the supreme court the governor everybody for you know the opening day of the legislative session and they'd hear from the great you know lawgiver through a pastor before they started to make laws and uh, that's how we've always done it in our leadership congress for patriot academy and john's going to be doing that for the students at our big national congress in uh, the first week of august if you'd like to be a part of that check it out at patriotacademy.com stay with us folks we'll be right back on at the core with walker bob and rick Lee. each one must give as he has decided in his heart not reluctantly or under compulsion my name is Abraham Hamilton III, and this is the Hamilton Minute. Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines socialism as an economic system in which the means of production are owned and controlled by the state. The distribution of goods are controlled by the state. It is a system where there is no private property. A stage of society, in Marxist theory, transitional between capitalism and communism. American socialists put the descriptor democratic in front of socialism because they hope to persuade you to vote for the elimination of private property. Make no mistake, socialism is socialism. There is no kinder, gentler form of it. Listen each weekday from 5 to 6 p.m. Central for The Hamilton Corner with Abraham Hamilton III, public policy analyst for the American Family Association. This is Raising God the Girls Minute with Patty Garibay of American Heritage Girls. It comes as no surprise that the secret to raising a godly girl is first being a godly parent. The special bond between mothers and daughters is something to be treasured. Together you experience the beauty of womanhood. But the bond between a daughter and her father is truly an incredible gift. From a young age, a caring father shows his daughter the unconditional love, respect, and admiration she deserves from the world. 
A virtuous father shows his daughter how to live according to God's will, to love others, to strive for holiness, and to seek forgiveness after wrongdoing. Proverbs tells us the righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. The presence of a godly man is important in raising a godly girl. We are all called to raise up the next generation of Christian leaders. Learn more about empowering girls through the love of God at RaisingGodlyGirls.com. Hey friends, it's Jessica Peck, Dr. Nurse Mama, as your one-minute parenting coach. Do you feel stuck in a rut in conversation with your teen? Are you arguing all the time? I challenge you to try the love your teen method. That's L-O-V-E. Listen with your face. Give them your full attention. Keep a neutral expression. Oh, offer open-ended questions. Don't lead with lecturing, but instead cultivate curiosity. V, validate their emotions, saying, I see this is really hurting you. It goes a long way in building a relational bridge. E, explore next steps together. Now is the time to step in and offer advice when they're in a better emotionally supported space to receive it. Read more about this in my book, Behind Closed Doors, and I'll see you on the Dr. Nurse Mama podcast here on American Family Radio. At the Core podcast are available at AFR.net. Now, back to At the Core on American Family Radio. Welcome back to At the Core with Walker Wobbin and Rick Reed. I'm Rick Reed, America's Constitution Coach. Thanks so much for staying with us today. Got a great guest coming up in a few minutes, uh, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, former Congresswoman, also a former uh, presidential candidate. Um, actually, was was uh, leading the presidential race uh, back in, uh, in in 2000. What was it? 12. Uh, won the Iowa straw poll that year. Actually, went out there to campaign for her at the Iowa straw poll, and um, and she just uh, just ran a fantastic race. Was a great voice of reason and a wonderful biblical voice in this uh, this world of politics and government, which we know is uh, is a God created institution. Yep, God created institution, and it's a blessing. Everybody's listening to me say that and go, what? Yeah, it's a blessing when it's inside its jurisdiction, when it's actually doing what it was designed to do and not outside its jurisdiction. When government gets outside its jurisdiction, it's a curse. It it, it becomes an absolute evil. But when it's inside its jurisdiction, and how does it stay inside its jurisdiction? Um, When it's inside its jurisdiction, it's a blessing. How it stays inside its jurisdiction is we, the people, keep it there. We do our job as citizens because we've been given certain authority. Government's given certain authority, and and, and that's our representatives that that execute that. And then the church is given certain authority, the family. I mean, you know, if everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, man, this thing gels. It's streamlined. It works well. It's a blessing for everybody. But it's our job to keep it within its jurisdiction as well. Not only is our is our local and state and federal government all you know just jacked up outside of its jurisdiction completely, but now we're going to make an international government be outside its jurisdiction. So this this issue with the World Health Organization is huge. We've got to bring more attention to it. We've got to pay attention to what the Biden administration is doing here. It is incredibly dangerous, incredibly dangerous. We, we've talked about it a lot here on the program. We had Frank Gaffney a couple weeks ago talking about it. We need to continue to talk about it. So as I as I get ready here for the interview with Michelle Bachman, I want to encourage you once again to go to that website, SovereigntyCoalition.org. SovereigntyCoalition.org. I know that's a weird one. S-O-V-E-R-E-I-G-N-T-Y. C O A L I T I O N dot org. I know there's not one person out there that wrote that down as I was saying it, but I had to do it. You can go to our website today at AFR and you can get the get the link. Uh, let's jump in. We're, we're we're blessed to have with us Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, now dean over at the Robertson School of Government, and kind of just a new investigative reporter. Michelle, thank you so much for going over and covering the World Health Organization and this complete disaster the Biden administration is creating with these folks. Uh, this is huge, and people just don't know about it. So thank you for bringing attention to it, and thanks for coming on the program to talk about it. Well, thank you. You're exactly right. The mainstream media, social media, cable news, they're not covering this story, and it's one of the biggest stories of our time, and it's being led by the Biden administration, who weirdly want to hand over authority and power to declare emergencies over health care from the United States to the World Health Organization. So just like over 
three years we lived under emergency powers. We saw essentially our constitutional and our Bill of Rights suspended in many ways. Now President Biden wants to give this level of power to the World Health Organization and not just for the United States. He wants all 194 member nations of the World Health Organization, which is the healthcare arm of the United Nations. He wants all of them to give over their authority to declare an emergency, which effectively creates a platform for the first time in history for global government. We've never seen this before, but this is what happened when I was in Geneva, Switzerland the last week or so in May. And absent any intervention, this is going to happen. There wasn't one nation that objected of the 194. They all were in agreement. And next year at this time, they will have this done unless there's some sort of intervening. Wow. Uh, it's it's actually mind-boggling. I mean, if, if we think the you know local petty tyrants in our counties and in our state health departments yeah. and the hospitals and all the things that happened over the last three years, we think that was bad. I mean, imagine if, if essentially the Chinese are, I mean, they're, you know, Trump called this out back in 2020 that the WHO was essentially Chinese controlled, uh, would be making the decisions for us as individuals. I mean, literally our physical health decisions made by an international organization. I would have thought that you and I were, you know, tinfoil hat crazy people five years ago having this conversation. Yeah. It's reality. Oh, yeah. It's happening. No, it, it's it's reality, and you're right. The Communist Chinese Party sees America as their number one enemy, and yet the Communist Chinese Party effectively controls the World Health Organization. So why in the world would we empower the Communist yeah. Chinese to have the power to declare an emergency over the United Nations? The main question people ask me is, well, Michelle, how would this be enforced? How would this happen? We know how this will be enforced. This will be enforced by a global digital passport. What do I mean by that? That is, take a look at your phone and think of a QR code on your phone. And that QR code is controlled by the World Health Organization and whatever they dictate. So if they say that you have to have so many vaccines or so many uh, booster shots or you have to be wearing a mask or you have to lock down, you have to be in compliance with that. So your QR code would say if you are in compliance with what the WHO said, then you'd have the right to travel. Then you'd right, have the right to enter certain stores. In fact, I saw a video yesterday, it, this is current, in England. And uh, to get into an Aldi's grocery store, you have to have the correct QR code to get in so that it's in compliance. And if you don't, you can't even get in the grocery store and buy food. So what happened after this meeting in Geneva, Switzerland, is one week later, the World Health Organization and the European Union, that's about 80 countries, made an announcement that the World Health Organization will be administering the global digital passport, this QR code on your phone. And they said this will be operational in June of 2023. So it's here. It's here for Europe, and the WHO is controlling it. So the real question is, when will the United States join? When will we have to be in this global digital passport? And that's where most members of the House of Representatives and most members of the U.S. Senate aren't even really aware that this is happening and they don't understand what a big thing this is because once sovereignty is passed it's a bit over decision making it's very difficult yeah. to get it back again and they don't they don't believe that this will create a one world government we've got to get our senators and our representatives to take this seriously and demand of the biden administration that they do not put us in a global digital passport it's 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 so shocking i think people don't want to think about it i think they, they they hear us talk about it and they think that's just too big that's too crazy it couldn't possibly be happening or or, or or like you said how would they enforce it and even without the digital stuff i think about the enforcement from petty tyrant frankly stewardesses and waitresses and yes. uh, american people that enforce this we stuff lived with that yes for three years yes for three years we so it's almost 
like that was a trial run. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think we flunked the test because we complied because we thought we had to. Yeah. Now I think they're not waiting around for us to comply. Now they're going to control us through a QR code so, so that we can't get on a plane. We can't go into a store and buy something unless we comply. So we need to tell our representatives and our senator, we're not doing this. We don't consent. And you can't 